Hi students, welcome to the chapter 16 lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to be covering plants, fungi, and the move onto land. Now keep in mind that this is the last chapter of material that you will be held accountable for on the final exam. We're going to cover two more chapters next week, and there will be a homework assignment over chapter 17 and 18, but that material will not be on the final. Okay, so the outcomes for this lecture, we're going to be covering plant origins. We are going to answer the question, what is a plant? We'll cover adaptations for life on land, including leaves, roots, and reproductive strategies. Plant biodiversity, including bryophytes, ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. Fruit and seeds, human connections, and fungi. Okay, so Plants evolved from algae, and you may remember from um, the chapter 15 material that algae are multicellular protists. They are eukaryotes that are not plants, animals, or fungi. And these early algal ancestors probably carpeted moist fringes of lakes or coastal salt marshes, and they first evolved over 500 million years ago. So this basic phylogeny here shows millions of years ago on the x-axis, and then these bars represent lineages. So we had the ancestral green algae here about 475 million years ago, that ancestor eventually led to carophytes, which is a modern-day group of green algae, as well as all plants. Um, so bryophytes evolved first, followed by ferns and other seedless vascular plants, and then gymnosperms and angiosperms followed. Carophytes, as I mentioned, are a modern-day lineage of green algae, and they may resemble one of these early plant ancestors. Plants and present-day caryophytes probably evolved from a common ancestor. So what exactly is a plant? Well, plants are terrestrial eukaryotes that make organic molecules via photosynthesis. So they are autotrophs, and they are also producers. Some plants have returned to their aquatic roots, no pun intended, um, but keep in mind that plants themselves evolved for life on dry land. So what distinguishes plants from algae? Well, a set of unique adaptations to land is what really sets plants apart from their algal ancestors and modern-day algae. Land would have been a new frontier for plants to colonize, and in order to survive on land, plants must avoid desiccation, which is basically avoiding drying out, so they have to be able to retain sufficient water, and they have to be able to obtain water from the soil. They need to obtain nutrients, and they need to reproduce. You know, it's interesting our biases as human beings and mammals. Um, for pictures of other mammals, this is a pronghorn fawn that I photographed in eastern Montana and it is surrounded by this beautiful sea of grasses and other plants. We have a, that's either a sagebrush or a rabbit brush plant there. And then there are multiple species of perennial plants that are native to the grasslands of eastern Montana. And here it looks like we have some thistles here. Um, but it's just interesting how we tend to overlook plants in favor of warm fuzzy animals. But when you get to actually studying plants and appreciating their diversity, you'll start to notice more and more plants in the environment and how really amazing they are and the fact that they form the basis for basically all life on earth and all um, or most food systems is quite remarkable. Okay, so let's compare a schematic of a plant with an alga. So we have this algae here that is basically buoyed by the water, so it does not have to have tissues that support its weight. It is surrounded by water that does that. The whole 
alga performs photosynthesis. It also absorbs water, carbon dioxide, and minerals from the water. So water, of course, is very good at holding temperature. It has a high specific heat, and it's a less variable environment than land. So in order to live on land and withstand more extreme temperatures, as well as wind, plants have some unique adaptations. The root has to anchor the plant. It absorbs water and minerals from the soil, and it's often aided by mycorrhizal fungi, which I'll get to in a couple of slides. We have the shoot that supports the plant and has to support it and allow it to grow tall enough to overcome competition from other plants, and it has to basically expose those leaves to a sufficient amount of sunlight. We have the cuticle that covers the leaves that reduces water loss and the stomata that regulate gas exchange. So remember plants are interesting in that they take in carbon dioxide and they expel oxygen. So it's that complementary chemical equation to cellular respiration. Of course, um, most of the chloroplasts, most, most of those photosynthetic organelles are within the leaves. And then the flower is really a reproductive structure. So the flower attracts pollinators and pollinators distribute spores and um, unwittingly fertilizes other plants. So we have the spores and gametes of the plant up here in the flower. So how do plants avoid desiccation? Well, leaves, of course, are the main photosynthetic organs of most plants. And leaves have stomata, which are those microscopic pores found on a leaf's surface for gas exchange. You may recall that there are some alternate photosynthetic strategies, the um, C4 and CAM plants, that will regulate when those stomata are open in order to conserve water. So that's one adaptation right there. Um, vascular tissue, of course, is not shared by all plants. There are some non-vascular plants that don't have this, but the plants that do have this have this system of tube-shaped cells that branch throughout the plant. And these cells are specifically for transporting vital materials such as water, minerals, and sugars. And then we have the cuticle, which is the waxy layer of leaves to prevent water loss. Um, so you may notice that a lot of desert-dwelling plants have a very thick cuticle, and that just helps those plants to retain water better. In order to get nutrients, plants have to rely on their roots. Luckily, they have a helping hand in the form of mycorrhizae in many cases. Mycorrhizae form symbiotic associations with the roots, and they are comprised of fungi. So the fungi absorb water as well as essential minerals from the soil. They provide these materials to the plant and in turn are nourished by sugars that are produced by the plant. So we have a mutually beneficial relationship here. Um, and remember that a symbiotic relationship is one in which both organisms benefit from that relationship. Mycorrhizae are key adaptations that made it possible for plants to live on land. This is a photo of some plant roots with its mycorrhizal associations. So all of these white filaments here are the fungus, and that really just increases the surface area of the plant roots. It helps the plants obtain more water and minerals than they could without those filaments. And then again, the mycorrhizae gain sugars from the plant. Plants produce their gametes in protective structures called gametangia which have a jacket of protective cells that surround a moist chamber where gametes can develop without dehydrating. So just like animals, plants have reproductive cells. And those reproductive cells contain all of the plant's DNA. So 
they have to develop in these protective chambers and from there they can um, mature as gametes and be distributed by pollinators, by wind, and sometimes of course plants will self-fertilize so they'll end up producing clones of themselves. Okay, let's move on to plant diversity. The fossil record chronicles four major periods of plant evolution, which are also evident in the diversity of modern plants. So each of these main categories have an increasing amount of complexity. The bryophytes are the non-vascular plants, so they do not have those special tube-like cells to conduct water and nutrients. The ferns have vascular tissue, but they lack seeds. Gymnosperms have vascular tissue and naked seeds. And angiosperms have vascular tissue and more advanced seeds. The first group that we'll cover are the bryophytes. About 475 million years ago, plants originated from an algal ancestor and the first type of plant to arise from this ancestor were the bryophytes. They're non-vascular plants that lack lignified walls, true roots, and true leaves. And they include the mosses, the liverworts, and the hornworts. Bryophytes have what is termed an alternation of generations that is different than that of most plants. So we have the gametophyte, which is the dominant form. So when you see moss, for example, all of this thick carpeting of moss, which is what you typically think of when you think about moss, is the gametophyte. So the gametophyte is actually a haploid form. It has just one set of chromosomes. And that gametophyte undergoes mitosis. Mitosis, in this case, produces haploid sperm and egg cells. Fertilization occurs in which a zygote is formed that is a diploid. And then mitosis continues to form a sporophyte. So the sporophyte is the form that results from fertilization. And these little stalks here seen here in this photo are the sporophytes. So the sporophytes have these spore capsules which produce the spores. Meiosis occurs and spores are formed um, as a result of that meiotic process. Mitosis occurs within those spores to give rise to the haploid gametophyte. So this is an interesting twist on the whole uh, mitosis versus meiosis thing. And again, the moss, what we usually think of as moss is actually the gametophyte. These little stalks here that are typically very thin and brown are the sporophytes. Okay, so the next group of plants to evolve were the ferns about 425 million years ago. Ferns and a few other groups of vascular plants evolved at this time with vascular tissue hardened with lignin but no seeds. So this is kind of one evolutionary step up from bryophytes. The vascular tissue allowed these plants to get larger and um, grow up from the ground more. Gymnosperms evolved about 360 million years ago. And during this period of time, the climate turned drier and colder. Gymnosperms evolved with seeds that consisted of an embryo packaged along with a store of food. They had protective coverings, but they were not enclosed in any specialized chambers. I'm going to go ahead and pause here, and I'm going to pick up in the next recording.